our first Steve actually on stream too, which uh, you know I I like to see tr like Steve's kind of wreak havoc in uh, Squad Strike because those matchups change very very quickly, so you have to adapt on the fly here. Going to Pokemon Stadium too, Ubo. Let's see what happens here in Winter Semis. Yeah, leading off with this Aegis, a character that. Uh uh, Chase has been practicing quite a bit lately, doing a lot of footstool uh, tech with uh, uh, this Pyra more specifically because Pyra down air is insane. And then Mithra, I mean, the character just does it all for you sometimes. Like, her buttons are so insane, and you just got to be willing and enough to push the envelope a little bit. Still, though, we're seeing, you know, that very standard just aerials from both yeah, we're both characters, right? Both of these characters want to kind of overwhelm you with a lot of chops, right? Going for the up smash here on Chag's side, not going to be able to find anything. So now Chase going to literally chase down Chag right into the sky with Mithra. But it's one of the things that I love about Chase's gameplay. He knows when to step off the gas. He says, you know what? I'm not going to go all the way up there, right? I'm going right. to get my damage and then switch over to what I know works. The Prominence Revolt not going to be able to do it. But we do have Pyra out now. We have to be careful because... Pit is one of those characters that can edge guard real well. I like the double switch there, using it as a faux air dodge, looking for the footstool maybe. No, the SDI down from Chag is going to get him out of that uh, side B uh, hit. So instead, we are just, we're seeing some high percentages, but Pyra is always going to have that advantage, even with the good DI on the part of Chag. That is the first stock going to I Hoshino. <laughs> Chase is going to hate that, listening to Vods later. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to tell him that too. You're welcome. Still though, if it's one thing that Incineroar and Mithra both do, it's juggle, right? And honestly, the 599 move Foresight certainly also helps that juggle too. But look at the way that Chag has not been able to really get anything started because once Chase has Chad where he wants, he backs off. He says, you know what? Come back on stage. I actually know when and where to fight you here. Oh Double Lord. down air into the up air. Chase is on fire. He is looking so, so clean right now and is just a utilizing Pyra and Mithra to their fullest by understanding what makes their offense good. For Mithra, it can be to push off stage. It can be to juggle. It can be to uh, manipulate the space so well. And for Pyra, it's the raw damage output on something like down air. Even you, um, the practice showing off in spades. Uh, come on. Come on, Chase. The recovery was first <laughs> on the left side of the stage. Was so, so good to make it back. Unfortunately, just fast falling past the ledge. But the Steve's up right now. And we are looking like Ch Chag is behind the eight ball. I got to talk about it, though. Steve in squad specifically, right? You could see what Chase's priorities were. Saying, oh my god, I'm mid-match. I don't have a material bar at this point. So setting up the blocks to kind of go back and say, you know what? Let's get a little bit more comfortable here so I can start getting this iron. But still, though, Chag actually playing it a little bit more passively here. I would kind of expect for Palutena to kind of start spacing out with, for example, Auto Radical or... Uh, the neutral be that I'm totally forgetting right now. Auto Radical, yeah. Still, uh, going to be able to try and get something going here if you're Chase, but you actually have to go box for box a little bit more. Now, A, I didn't agree with crafting iron tools here, but any little bit of damage you can get on this Palutena can make up for the lack of materials that you have just because the knockback values on Steve are so high. You always get a little bit of time to mine a couple resources whenever you land something like a back air or a dash tag, and at 60%, it doesn't need to close out the stock. It just needs to give you a little bit of time in order to find that diamond. Ooh, what a heads up reflect. reversal. I remembered, by the way, but still, <laughs> now it's Palutena versus Palutena and the explosive flame. That's what I, I was there about to is. say, Flame Nova, but then that's Pyra. Yeah. You know, we saw Fire a little bit earlier. And now it's the battle of Nairs, Ubel. It's the battle of spacing, right? And it's just like we're back in Ultimate right on December 7th, 2018, right? Yeah, it's we're it's back right in there. Uh, but now it's all about spacing, right? Chag has done an amazing nice. job of bringing this back. The footstool, unable to find anything, though. All Chase really needs to do at this point is just back up, but just a little bit, but beautiful uh, parry by Chag here. Still, once again, both players trying to find their options as now Chag is going to be able to fire back just a little bit here. But you can see the way that Chase is kind of forcing Chag to that right side, going for this back air, but now Chag has kind of adapted to that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Using the F tilt on the platform as a faux anti-air type, uh, type of way. I like that utilization, but the teleport getting called out there from Chase putting it right in the middle, right in teleport cancel range, anticipating the movement and closing out the stock. As it looks like we are running it back. We're having a good time. That's yeah. also what's really important. I love when Players side events are fun. fun. Yeah, right? It's, cr it's crazy, right? In this game, oh my god, five oh. years later? Uh, six years later at this point? Oh the god. long zone, man. <laughs> Sonic!
Bro, but the Aegis was doing so well. All right. Sonic's restream? I will just say, uh, <laughs> shout outs to Chase, too. Definitely chasing the content grind. I saw him, like, uh, vlogging yesterday oh with Spargo. <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right. Doing it for the content at this point. Yo, please pick Belmont. Please, please, Red please. Way, Let me nerd Red out, way? please. The Bayonetta, okay. I also like this pick as yeah, well. I feel like Incineroar oh, always comes out for, like, a quick show and then goes back behind yeah. the curtains like, eh, hey, you didn't do enough It's here. a luchador. You got you to gotta make appearances, but you're also trying to... And leave, uh, leave everyone in anticipation a little bit. Either way, though, we are repping the Sonic up against the Bayonetta in the middle rung as leading off, it's going to be en Enderman up against Pit. I like how we're putting Steve slash Enderman first at this point, right? I think what we saw was kind of the glaring flaw of playing Steve and Squad Strike, right? Where we're unable to really get the materials that we really want so we can do maximum damage here. But instead, when we're starting with Enderman slash Steve, right, we're able to kind of get a little bit more normalcy in a format that's a little bit more, you know, crazy and wild. But I love the way that Chag is the one who's approaching now, right? And this is what you kind of have to do when you're trying to learn how to beat Steve, right? How do I approach while also not just eating so much damage here? But here comes Chag trying to get a combo off the down throw. Instead, we're just going to keep spacing these aerials and honestly, not looking too bad so far. Yeah, it's we're keeping things super, super mid-range. And Pit already wants to play a very mid-range game, poking with a lot of back airs, forward airs, and arrows, uh, as well as these down tilts on the ground. But that can be exactly where Steve wants you to be, behind his wall and allowing him time just to get a couple resources and a couple of opportunities to mine at the, at each time. As another dash that comes in, burning a lot of resources there. That's an almost an empty bar here, Eric. Still Whoa. going. That is going to be an empty stock coming out from I Hoshino at this point, <laughs> aka Chase. I, I'm, I'm not we got, we got it. We got, we got one. Sometime. We got one. Still though, Sonic versus Pit. Not a matchup that I don't think I've, you know, seen quite too often. But we can uh, probably uh, guarantee that Chase is going to be a little bit more aggressive off the side here, winding yes. up for the forward smash, unable to find anything. But instead, we will be able to get the Sonic spin here, going for the forward air. And it's always fun to see people play Sonic, just because. It, we have, you know, this peak Sonic like Sonics, right? And how do we deviate here? And how we deviate is also SDing off the side. <laughs> Ubel is beside himself right next to me, by the way. Sonic players, I am pleading you. I am begging you. Stop using homing attack. Just, just unmap it if you can. <laughs> Remove that button from your like lifespan. Like it'll do. It'll it's like push. Yoshi's with egg roll. Exactly, <laughs> exactly like that, Lyric. Exactly like that. <laughs> just don't look at it. Anymore. Just don't. Just forget it exists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got the the battle of two beauties here. We got Bayonetta here coming out from Shack. First time we're gonna see Bayonetta here. Now, once again, it is a best of five now as we've approached winter semi. So yes. we have a little bit of time to mess around with a lot of characters we want to see. But if it's one thing that we love to see, it is Bayonetta. I think in this game she did become like a little. Bit, a little bit more spicy in this yes. game. And you can tell by the way that Chag uh, kind of moves around, especially with Palutena, that this is kind of like a natural character for Chag to pick up here. But here we go, getting a couple of these jabs here mid-air, trying to figure out a way that we can continue the combo. Finds the Witch Twist up, but unable to find anything else after. Oh, the melee crap popping off a little bit in the background. Ooh. What a pickup! Getting the first hit, but not getting the spiky hitbox of that down there. Instead, the dive tick comes out, looking for any sort of pickup. It is a last stock situation for Chase here after that SD, and Bayonetta specializes in doing damage and extending leads. A rough position for Chag uh, to, uh, for rather for Chase to be in, but Chag is taking all of it in and more. Absolutely, all really Chag needs to do here is just find a back air punish and uh, just kind of catch Chase jumping, right? But right. still, though, on this left side of the stage, getting a little bit more crazy here, but still finding a way to teleport out at this point. There's the down tilt, still trying to find an option all the way up here, but there's the back air. Chase fighting back as hard as he can, but the problem is you have to go into the whole next stop, even if you get this one versus a fresh Palutena, where all Palutena kind of needs is either one of those, an up air. Yeah. That's a really, really tall it's order back at the air, end. up air, there. dash attack. attack. Yeah. <laughs> Like back throw. Palutena, you know, I last time I casted Smash, it was like <laughs> that killed. <laughs> yeah, I love when I love when the that killed comes out. It will be the one one right now. Our first I or no, it's definitely not our first one one. Uh, 
I really, as much as I really appreciated the Sonic coming out from Chase, I know we just did that for content, so we're going to go back to our tried and true a Pyramithra, but instead, no, we are just going to keep playing Sonic if we're yeah. Chase. The sure. Sonic and the Bayonetta stay, but it is the Steve that comes away on the part of Chase, instead replacing with the Aegis. Character just seems like he was way more comfortable with, and honestly, for Steve, it's a character that doesn't thrive in a format like this. You right. want long games where you control the tempo with blocks and with materials and all the damage output you can provide, but when you only get one stock, you know, it's kind of, you lose a lot of that value as we go to the rubber game in this best of five set, game three. Let's see what happens here, Rick. I, I love how we've essentially now started with our nimble and quick characters, right? I, essentially, both of these characters, small, fast, get a lot of damage, right? So right. now I feel like in game one, where Chase's Mithra was kind of uncontested in terms of the aggression, now Chag has a character that essentially does the same thing, right? We're trying to stack on a ton of damage, all of these combos that do a lot of damage, but still, now it is going to be Chase starting to pull away just a little bit more, but once again, players are both trying to find their options here. Sometimes when you're playing squads, right, it takes so much to adapt to each character every single time. It takes a lot. It, it can be good enough in order to uh, of a reason to remove a character from the lineup for a game if you know you're going to be in a long set. Remove the Aegis and then make it fresh for the later games where you don't reveal all of your tricks. Though that one's kind of a bread and butter as the down air into up air closes out the stock. And once again, this E just giving, cha uh, giving Chase the lead. <laughs> yeah, they both start with it's, CHA. It's the, it's the CHA. <laughs> guy. Come on, man. <laughs> Doing our best here. But still, uh, if it's one thing that I just love about Chase, it's just the, the timing always feels right on all these switches, the combos, just the patience for this player, right? And now Chag still now onto this pick, struggling a little bit more to find an opening. Now, granted, finds the aerial down, but we're still trying to find a way that we can you know, call out a jump potentially with a back air, but still a little bit weird with the side special clanking here. But I'm loving the way that Chase throws out the Flame Nova and then actually kind of jumps into it. So the active hitbox is still there and we're still safe. It's the best way to keep you that. Roll reads can be uh, identified, but if you're surrounding yourself with a hitbox, then hey, you're just chilling. And this Pyra is threatening so much. And oh my lord, with, if not for the drift away, then you were gone there if you're Chag with a, a near max rage Pyra ready and able to rock. Still, once again, jumping into the Flame Nova to kind of back. Uh, throw off the tempo just a little bit more. It's like essentially playing hopscotch with yourself, right? You're throwing the stone and then kind of going right to it. Prominence Revolt, though, nice going to get parried. parried. And we were talking about that frame two down smash a little bit earlier. Definitely going to pay off for Chad here. Now, that would be crazy if it was frame two. <laughs> or for frame, frame ten. ten. Frame, frame, <laughs> frame two. He needs it, though. Listen, all I'm saying is if Pit had, you know, a lot of options frame two, we'd see a, we'd see a lot more Pit. <laughs> He's a good boy. What a good anime girl. Stop it. <laughs> as the Sonic comes down, hopefully not using nearly as much homing attack this time. The spin charge to blast his way through, and this is the type of Sonic gameplay that honestly everyone anticipates to see, just bouncing back and forth but uh, from this one side of the stage to the other. But it's Chag and finding ways to hold down the position for Sonic into the corner, yet no damage is being done. Instead, we're just all in control here. If we're Chase Punish, stop using homing attack. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have some words with Chase I'm after gonna this set. <laughs> have some very strong words for homing attack believers. It just looks like Chase is a little bit more uncomfortable now. Yeah. You know what I mean? While Pyra and Mithra were a little bit more fluid, now it's like, all right, well, I know to kind of start up with Spin Dash, but what do I do after, right? And now Chag essentially has been kind of you know, utilizing the slow burn to get back into this, going all the way off there for the forward air here, but oh my goodness, what a very scary recovery. The back air not going to be able to do it, but Chase going to quite literally chase him out there. F smash, unable to hit. Yeah, this really does seem like a, a player who is just operating on a game plan with Sonic versus a Chag who just has full understanding of his character. And that difference can be enough in order to make your way back into this game. Chag at, sitting at 153 and not threatened in the least. The double nair will take the stop, but you did plenty of damage going into your Palutena and feel you must feel pretty good about your options after this Sonic has just not been the middle anchor that it's needed to be. 
Ooh. Yeah. That's a really hard down air, too. I mean, that propped you up all the way up for that oh. up air here. And now we will see a tale of two nares coming out from both Chase and Shag here, as it is just going to be, you know, the Palutena Pain Train over and over, right? Double nair, double up air. We know the Ooh, story, but three. can we take it all the way up here? Maybe, and I want to just kind of utilize and kind of talk about, you know, the play styles at this point, right? Like, right. I love the way that Chase, once again, is respectfully pushing the gas. Say, you know what? I'm comfortable in this position. I know exactly my combos, but if I don't know something, I'm going to back away and still throw out a hitbox. Yeah, it's the uh, attempt to initiate and just press on Chag's buttons just a little bit to get him to do something like that air dodge. Now you understand that fastball air dodge is going to be in uh, Chag's kick. You see it come out yet again towards that platform. Uh, Chase is certainly going to be looking for those, but meanwhile Chag entering back and forth and just making the most out of any spacing that he's found. Corner scenarios and awkward positions feel like no problem for Chag most of the time because he's willing to take a hit in order to get back to center stage. Oh, Chase going all the way out Ooh, there nice. for the down air, but will find the grab instead. I love the way that Chag retreating out, recognizing Palutena's full mobility off stage. Death attack not going to be able to do it, but you know what Chase is lining up for. Still, though, kind of stuck on the platform at that point. Kind of a wishful F tilt there, but unable to find anything. Here comes Chag, finds the top hits of Nair as we're trying to get and land with something here, but instead it'll just be aerial for aerial until we get a hard call out. Going for the back air, but instead the dash attack will do it. Chase going up in the set 2-1. I always talk about refresh rate from players because it feels, sometimes this game moves so fast and you are unable to recognize what position you're in. It causes scrambles, it causes issues. But some of these players, some of these really, really good players aren't looking for situations where they remember or they're like looking for answers in the moment. They just know what to do. And Chag, wrecking, uh, excuse me, Chase, recognizing the spacing and we're like, oh, this isn't good enough to get Nair into up tilt. Well, then I'm just going to chase the uh, uh, panic options from Chag, look for a back air on spot dodge, and instantly dash stack. That's all coverage, and that's all well-designed offense from a, from a player that loves to push the gas. Absolutely. Sending Steve back in here. We just can't decide on a third character we're, we're here for Chase. We're grooving. Uh, the, the, the thing, but the thing <laughs> is, oh my god, the stutter right now, oh my goodness. Um, once again, the characters move so fast. For us casters, this is like constant knowledge drop. This is like the ultimate test of <laughs> casting squads, right? Anyway, I'm going to blow myself <laughs> up. Anyway, let's just start this game by blowing ourselves up. What, what are we, Snake here? Um, uh, the thing is, though, with with Steve starting out once Ooh, again, like it always idea. goes back to my initial concern of, are we really doing the most that we can do with Steve right now? But the thing is, with Bayonetta, we don't really have those reliable options to really kind of get around some of these walls as much as we'd like to. It depends on how Chag approaches it. If he's going to approach the wall head on and just nair it, then you're absolutely correct. I'd like to see Chag try to set up some dive kick moments and uh, some <laughs> ways to get Steve in the air where his blocks aren't going to be used to wall off rather used as platforms to spring off of, because then you could potentially extend off of them and reset your resources. Yeah, absolutely. Going to get the diamond out, I believe, for the first time this set here. But look at Chag potentially going for the witch time, Ooh. unable to find anything. I'm really surprised we didn't see a ledge from back here in that interaction. Now, granted, we are still able to find it, but we will find the up smash off of the cart here. And for, you know, the first time this set, we're going to see this Steve kind of thrive. Steve feels like, well, I don't well, you know, still stick to my word that Steve is a little bit weaker in the squad strike in specific. This is a gamble that you play that is paying off for Chase right now, as this Steve has all stone, so much iron, gold on deck, and diamond tools. Like, this is the opportunity for Steve to really run away with the lead. Absolutely. Beautiful space jabs as well coming out from Chase, too. But it is going to be Chag who needs to find a way with this pit. And once again, pit does have the spacing tools to do it, right? With the uh, with the forward air. But instead, it will be the side special into the down smash. Uh, Chase's own block actually ruining yeah, that whole entire yeah. stock for him. But here comes Aegis, right? And we've been talking about the lineups and the mix-ups this entire time. But honestly, I think Chase Chase is in a really good spot because of how confident this Mithra has been. I completely agree. Being able to slot it in as the going first and going so Oh, no. He's okay, good. He's fine, good. <laughs> Magnet hands. Happy we're, face. We're, we're, the fact that Chase, oh, getting the double footstool, missing the tech, and the jab lock was there. What a conversion coming out from Chase in order to pick up a huge one-stock lead with a character he has easily looked the most comfortable with the entirety of the set. Yeah, absolutely. And now we get the foresight here, which will allow for Chase to get something set up. But unfortunately, the platform being there means that we're going to have to reset and kind of find again. But one of the things that I think a lot of characters struggle 
with versus the Aegis I love is FDs. uh your speed, but you know, sometimes you know, this is when people are like Pokemon Stadium One in the chat. So. <laughs> Do any Pokemon Stadium One? <laughs> so we're going back to the tale of two Palus here. Yeah, uh, it will be. be Chad who really needs to take this game, right? Definitely oh, wants yeah. to bring this to a game number five here. Uh, but now it's all about, you know, these rolls, right? No person wants to get picked up by the back hit of the Nair. So instead, we just kind of have to play a little bit more patient here. I just love the way that they're throwing their shields at each other. The back airs here so beautifully spaced once again by two amazing Palu, Palu po players. Pokemon Stadium 2 coming in clutch there for Chag as the spacing from Chase bounced him, uh, bounced him straight up, allowing him to fall into that jab. Just a, a rough bit of luck and a rough bit of spacing there for the player who's just trying to get out of this set, take the win. But it's Chag playing all aces right now, finding a hand. Perfect, looking for the down air, but not finding it. A great spacing on the part of Chase, but still in disadvantage. I love the way that Chase just waited in that yeah, moment, right? Patient. You had to wait. There's the dash oh. attack. It will take it. Chag bringing us to a game number five. Chase, who had such a better start with Steve. It's not actually going to be enough thanks to that self-destruct due to Pyra's prominence revolt. Yeah, I mean, both games that Chase has lost, the middle character in the Sonic and the, uh, the Pyra Mithra just SDing at sub-30 percentages, or sub-50 at least, I don't remember the exact numbers. We're sticking with that same lineup, though, as the previous game, feeling out that this is the uh, uh, trio of characters that Chase wants to lock in with. No Sonic to be seen. We're trying to take this Game 5 set and get into Winner's Finals. Absolutely. Game five here, starting us off real nice here in squads. It will be the Bayonetta and the Steve slash Enderman starting us off here. I want to see if we're able to have just as good of a start if we're Chase, but if we're Chag, right? Got to talk a little bit about Chag. I want to see what Chag does differently here because we know what Steve's going to do. We know that Steve is going to go set up a wall, but how is Chag going to handle this a little bit differently because Steve definitely got all that mileage last game. Very, very true, Thurik, and something to point out as well. After all the change-ups and swaps around for character and lineup over the, for these uh, both of these players over the past four games, we're running it straight back, no changes at all. Steve, Pyra, e uh, Steve, Aegis, Palutena, Bayonetta, Pit, Palutena. Yeah, absolutely, and you can tell that Chase actually going for a more aggressive play this time, right? You can tell that he actually really wants to fight this out here, but honestly, it looks at what Chag wanted here. Unable to find the back air here, just spaced off just a little bit thanks to Witch Time here. There's the up tilt, we can't find the back air off of it either. So now it's all about Chase. How do we get out of this combo here? But Chag looks so comfortable on the Bayonetta now. Yeah, where there's no worries, and Palutena, uh, excuse me, Bayonetta's crazy offstage range can really put a threat to any of the block tricks that uh, Chase seems to be wanting to do. Catching the startup of Minecart, but not finding anything huge. It's all just one hit with these ABKs and nothing doing. Even the downer is too far inside in order to find the finisher on the heel. Absolutely, and now it is Chase actually prioritized playing a little bit more defensive here. Not gonna go in and set up the wall completely and not even gonna go hide. Instead, we're gonna try and bank on that diamond and try and actually bait Chag to come in to start. And, but still though, holding on to this stock, 167. I can't tell if Chase wants to go mine or if he wants to play it aggressively. I think he's trying to bait that he's gonna go mine and then go, you know, kind of hit for hit at this point. Bayonetta is rather light and Steve can handle Bayonetta pretty easily, but we have to get to that point, right? Oh, Having gosh. the wall there will You're help, but there it is. Witch time on to the minecart. Now, Steve is going down, but honestly, Bayonetta could have, you know, had a lot more, you know, percentage left in the tank here. Yeah, with Steve, you're threatening stock right now. With Pyra, you're not as threatened, especially with uh, the Mithra, seemingly more common to win, actually win neutral. And Bayonetta can pour on the damage. Any one hit could be a down tilt, could be a, a uh, an ABK. A, a Witch Twist out of shield, some, something big is being set up here for Chag if he's able to find any sort of hit. And the, da the dive kick is going to get him out of a dangerous situation, constantly outmaneuvering Chase right now. Yeah, and honestly, if I'm Chag, right, what I want to do is get this Pyra off stage and then trap her there, right? Oh, yeah. Pyra is so unforgiving off stage, and so is Mithra, honestly, at certain points, too. But look at the way that Chag is holding very firmly, you know, in that center, watching, saying, you know what, are you going to approach here? No, but not going to be able to find it. Can't find the up smash here, but here we yep. go. Finds all the way oh. up, but unfortunately, great, you know, SDI out from 
chase. I think he needed to do a second witch twist in that combo in order to turn it into a stock taking opportunity because landing a dive kick on a platform is a Bayonetta player's dream of an opportunity. It's just going to result in damage here though for Chag, but the lead is still there. 87% on this Aegis is nothing to sneeze at, especially since Pit has a bevy of confirms to utilize at these percentages. And especially on a character like Mithra too, is a little bit lighter, right? Oh, Goes for playing. the side special here, but Chase, no exact true punish. It's just going to be Nair versus Nair here and we need to see one of those mithra strings that we saw a little bit earlier in the set right when you see those up air chops that stack on so much damage so they're so annoying to get out but now look at check so comfortable waiting in the corner saying you know what you come to me i have an option for every approach this always tends to happen in fighting games across the board here there where it always ends up being defense that wins out the end of the day and if you're not ready to block or hold on to your stocks without with air dodges in the blast zone then hey it can resort in resort into damaging, damaging opportunities and very, very long winded stocks. The problem is now, now that Chase is feeling a little bit more flustered, it's definitely coming out in the gameplay. Oh, you yeah. can tell, you know, Chase really kind of being on Chag's shield saying, I want you to do something out of shield so I can nair you. I want to find a punishing option. But now Chag, honestly, jump, jump, jumping away. If he's able to find the confirm, he goes for it. But look, once again, staying grounded, not chasing after Chase, quite literally, not putting himself into a position where he can get reversal at all. The best jugglers often commit to their option very, very low to the ground. And honestly, it seems like Chase is reaching quite a bit of times, throwing out these up airs really high, trying to make these reads, but instead it's Chad calling out the panic options, taking advantage of Chase, who is just reaching so many times. That explosive flame, honestly, very, very fortunate that Chad dashed into it because it was a whiff in, uh, initially. Yeah, absolutely. Explosive flame, the Palutena B yeah. move that I totally forgot. <laughs> Casting, spells. <laughs> Casting spells. Casting spells <laughs> from the corner. All right, well, once again, I would not love for this set to end with a better matchup than Palutena versus Palutena, right? It's all spacing wars here. And honestly, I'm looking at Chase if we're able to approach safely and to kind of calm down, right? Yes. Chad looks so well composed right now. Beautiful spacing, just not only in the movement, but also in the aerials as well. But look at this. Chase going to get a little tricky of a ledge trump there. Finds the up air instead of just going all the way down for the back air. Could have been so much more, but I love that Chase is walking down Chag into this corner and then making a little reads to get that, uh, to close that distance and get some damage. We're in an even game here. We're going toe to toe, blow for blow, but back air for back air. We're flashing some shields. Yeah, my goodness, it's so close no matter which way you look at it here. Finds the Nair down. Oh, like just narrowly the escapes the up smash here. Beautiful space back air by Chase. But I love the way that Chad not even going to ledge saying, you know what, let's just kind of like separate here at this point. Chase? What? <laughs> Brother, that is, that's how that ends? Chase can't believe it. I can't, I can't believe, believe it. it. Devin, you back there? Can you believe that? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Really? Man. Listen, man. It happens. Sometimes you just fall off the stage. Let, yeah, let's. <laughs> well, go Chased through it the three set. times. This was, a, this was a great set. I'm this not was a great set. Like. This yes, was a great set. A ton of character mastery, right, at the right. end of the day, right? The beautiful, beautiful just spacing on all sides here. Palutena's, though. Uh, look, let's. Let's see what happened here, right? So, uh, backing up, backing up. Still, One, <laughs> back two, airs, back three, airs. Four. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, man. There we go. All yeah, right, here we go. This is the final stock. Let's Once again, Palutena's only want one thing, and it's back air here. All right, where are we going here? We do it, and. Oh, no double jump. The All right, so the, what happened, Henry? The ledge. Okay, let's reset this. <laughs> Me too, me Did too, honestly. Did you see the look on Chase's face? As Chag was just getting up, he's like, nice. This, there's too much time here, and he dips too low to make this a uh, anything more than intentional. It's the double jump that did not come out for Chase. Okay. I see. You're trying to go for the mix-up of ledge drop, double jump, air dodge, and they get past the back air. It's not a bad play whatsoever. Just the jump did not come out for Chase, and that's... Really unfortunate because honestly, he played <laughs> he played squad strike better of the two, but just was his own worst enemy at the end of the day. Absolutely. 
Unfortunate for Unfortunate. Chase, but we will be seeing him kind of drop below. And, uh, you know, we'll see if he can run it all the way back up to Chag, who will be heading into winner's finals versus the winner of the next match that we don't know. But before we get to that point, we got to talk about a couple things. Uh, we got to talk about this merch. Collision 2024 is teaming up with Spiff Space this year to you know, this exclusive Heroes vs. Villains merchandise. It's all sweet, it's all custom. All proceeds for this year goes to help support the event for this and future events ran by Collision. If you guys couldn't come this year, make sure you guys head on over to purchase some merch at start.gg slash collision slash shop. But also, you know, if you're at home, you can also buy the merch on site as well. And of course, there is a game developed by Michael Peretta, Chris Farina, and Nick Zonak. Heartseeker is a fast-paced, platform-like puzzle game where every click strikes your blade into the walls of the dungeon. Strike swiftly and manage your way through 21 